Fantasy Freaks and Geeks, what's going on? James Coe here with you. I appreciate you tuning in to the Sleeper King Football Podcast on this beautiful Saturday. Uh, let's talk about some injuries, and then we'll talk about some sleeper wide receivers to get you ready for week number 11. We're going to start in Green Bay. We're going to talk about Marshawn Lloyd. Apparently, he got appendicitis. <laughs> I talked about Marshawn Lloyd uh, potentially being a guy that you could stash away at the end of your bench. I think we could probably put that one to bed. OK, because, again, uh, he'll probably be out for the next couple of weeks at a minimum here uh, when we're talking about Marshawn Lloyd. So it's Josh Jacobs and Josh Jacobs all the time. So uh, so, again, we're talking about maybe another two week absence here. How much how much more ramp up time does he need? And by the time he gets, I think, all ramped up as a rookie, uh, the, the the fantasy season will be over. So don't worry about Marshawn Lloyd uh, moving forward. If he's on your bench. I think you can go ahead and drop him. T. Higgins is back, which is great to see. Um, no other news really needed there. Jermaine Burton, who hadn't really done much uh, all season long, if you were hoping out or, excuse me, holding on and hoping uh, for some kind of breakout from the rookie, probably not going to happen. Jawan Jennings is taking on Seattle. He's dealing with a late week ankle injury. This one gives me a little bit of pause. I, I do think that you should keep a close eye. Uh, on this one anytime you see an injury come up later in the week because he was fine uh, good to go on Wednesday and then picked up this injury on Thursday again was practicing in a limited capacity on Friday is going to be questionable going into his game against Seattle but uh, if he does not go uh, obviously that's got some pretty big implications uh, there for the first round pick in Ricky Pearsall and of course Debo Samuel as well now if he does go like I said, it's a great matchup against Seattle. You want to play Juwan Jennings for sure. At the running back position, how about Jalen Warren? He also picked up a little bit of a late week back injury, and now he's questionable versus Baltimore. I don't necessarily know if this impacts or has a huge impact on Najee Harris, but again, if you're hoping that Jalen Warren might come back or be effective this week, rather, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about his status and availability uh, versus Baltimore. As we kind of knew, Trevor Lawrence is going to be out. Tank Bixby is out of this ball game as well. If you've got Travis Etienne, and listen, <laughs> Travis Etienne has been one of the biggest busts in fantasy football. But I think this week, obviously, this helps raise the ceiling and floor. For Travis Etienne, who I imagine will, will get plenty of work, if you're looking for a deep sleeper, ah, shoot, I, I, I don't even know. Um, are we going to recommend Dearness Johnson or not? Mm, it feels a little dicey. Have him on standby. And again, just in case, just in case. And if you've got room on the end of your bench, you can go ahead and add uh, Dearness Johnson if you are so inclined. Uh, we kind of knew that Sam Laporta was trending towards out with that shoulder injury, and he is officially out. We talked about this on yesterday's show, about how Brock Wright is a potential sleeper here. But I do think this has, this has implications on Jamison Williams, who I will get to in the sleeper section uh, for today. On the defensive side of the football for Tennessee, Legereus Sneed is out. And I think this can only mean good things for Jay Jettas and Jordan Addison. I know that Tennessee's been dealing with this Legereus Sneed injury for a while, but there was a chance that he would come back uh, this week. And obviously he is officially out now. That's really good, again, for Justin Jefferson. Both starting tackles are out for the Rams. This does make me worried about the passing game, right? Stafford has been... I mean, shoot, Stafford's been wildly inconsistent uh, this season already. I, I just can't imagine this is going to help and probably has the biggest impact on somebody like Puka Nakua. Again, if they need to get the ball out quick, I would imagine Cooper Cup is going to be hev heavily utilized uh, in this matchup. Now, what's up with Puka? I mean, if you got him, you're starting him. That's for sure. But you can't help but imagine that Again, Matt Stafford's going to be under duress. How much time will he have to go look for a Puka Nakua, even on something like a 15-yard route? What's that going to look like? Um, so, again, I think Puka might be impacted in this game. Again, if you've got him, you're playing him. I'm just saying the floor is certainly lower for Puka Nakua this week. And Stafford, too. Again, I, I thought maybe he might be a streaming option here uh, for some folks, but I don't know. 
I think when you've got both your tackles missing and, oh, by the way, New England is just outside the top 10 in terms of sacks per game, they might get after it in regards to, to Matt Stafford. So of that part, I am just just a little bit worried. Um, so again, that does lower the ceiling and floor, I think, uh, for Matt Stafford in week number 11. All right, let's get to these sleeper wide receivers. And we're going to start with my favorite one of the week, and that's Elijah Moore. Taking on the New Orleans Saints, the Saints have allowed the third most yards and the fifth most receptions to receivers in the slot. I've got an interesting stat here for you. The Saints have seen five different primary slot receivers. And of those guys, uh, okay, sorry, let me go back. The Saints have seen five different primary slot receivers who have been targeted at least five times in their matchup. All five of those receivers scored 11-plus PPR points. But the ceiling, my God, the ceiling. These five players averaged 23.36 PPR points per game. Now, again, the floor is all five scored at least 11-plus PPR points. But the average of those five guys, 23 PPR points? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now, again, these are those five receivers that were targeted at least five times in that game. Guess what? Elijah Moore, primary slot player for the Cleveland Browns, he's averaging an insane 10.5 targets per game in the two games since Jameis Winston has taken over the starting quarterback position there for the Browns. He's my absolute favorite wide receiver sleeper this week against the New Orleans Saints. All right, let's talk about Mike Williams taking on Baltimore. This one, <laughs> look, it, it's pretty obvious at this point, right? We're going into week number 11. This shouldn't surprise you, but the Ravens have been getting absolutely hammered by the forward pass. They allow the most fantasy points per game to outside wide receivers, allowing the most yards, the most receptions, and the most touchdowns per game to receivers who line up on the outside. Seven different outside receivers have scored 12-plus PPR points against Baltimore over the last six weeks. Again, last six weeks, seven different outside receivers have scored 12-plus points. Six of those seven players have scored 23 or more PPR points. That is just mind-melting stuff right there. So Mike Williams is in a great spot. Obviously, we love George Pickens. George Pickens is in an absolute smash spot here against the Baltimore Ravens. We talked about it. We alluded to it. Sam Laporta out for Detroit. Jamison Williams taken on Jacksonville. Now, the Jacksonville Jaguars are not, they're not as bad <laughs> uh, as the Ravens. But, man, they're right there. They are right there. They've allowed the third most fantasy points per game to outside receivers this year. They're also giving up big chunk plays as well. The Jags are dead last in both receptions and yards allowed on deep passes this year. That obviously pairs very well, very well with the big play nature of Jamison Williams' game. So again, Jamison Williams, absolutely worth a start this week. Quentin Johnston against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals have allowed the fifth most receptions, the fifth most yards, and the fifth most fantasy points to receivers lined up on the outside. An, abs an absurd 10 different outside receivers have scored 11 plus PPR points against Cincinnati over the last nine games. Again, last nine games, 10 Different outside receivers on the season, y'all. Only the lowly Patriots failed to produce a double-digit PPR outside wide receiver. Quentin Johnston, I get it. Uh, if you followed me, you, you know I'm not I'm not a huge fan of Quentin Johnston's game, but he has had some ups and downs. Uh, mostly downs this season, but I do think that this is in a pretty good spot. By the way, Johnson has scored a touchdown in two straight games. It also coincides with the fact that the Chargers have been throwing the ball a lot more over the last five games. I think Quentin Johnson is in a fabulous spot 
against the Cincinnati Bengals to give you, I'm going to say, 12 or more PPR points in this one. Let's see if he gets into the end zone and really takes that score to the next level. All right, I got a couple of deep sleepers here for you. Actually, I got a handful, man. Uh, I hope you guys are ready. This is the stuff that I get excited about, all right? <laughs> Let's go. Uh, these are names that, I don't know, you're probably not totally considering, probably outside of your radar. These are for these are for those fantasy managers who are in competitive leagues. They need a little help. They might need a big number, right? If you're chasing some upside, these players are for you. Kayshawn Booty against the Rams. I'm just coming out the gate. Fire. Hot right now. And I get it. Right? Like, you read, you, you hear about this one, you're like, oh, man. This one's an absolute non-start. I'm not start, starting no Kayshawn Booty. Are you kidding me? I Hear me out. Hear me out. The Rams have been getting routinely beaten by outside receivers. They allow the seventh most fantasy points per game. Two receivers light up on the outside this year. Okay, now that being said... Kayshawn Booty has now emerged as the leading man on the outside for the Patriots. They've been searching for who is going to play outside receiver for them. I think they have settled in. I think. I think they have settled in on Kayshawn Booty. Why? He led the team in routes run last week, and he played a dominant 97% of the snaps last week. In fact, He's been over 95% snap share for two straight weeks. He's been over 80% snap share for five straight games. From a volume standpoint, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. He has seen six targets in three straight contests. Um, in a softer matchup like he's facing against the Rams, I could see that six you know, growing from about six to anywhere between six to eight targets in this ballgame. If he sees eight targets in this ballgame, I promise you Kayshawn Booty's got a really good chance to put up a big number. So, again, softer matchup against the Rams, and Kayshawn Booty has now emerged as the primary outside, one of the primary outside wide receivers for the New England Patriots. Let's see if this one connects. Uh, we're going to continue on this deep sleeper theme here. Marquez Valdez-Scantling. <laughs> I know, I get it. This absolutely seems like we're chasing points here. This seems like a classic MVS trap game where, yo, he goes crazy and then we're like, and then he does nothing. I, I'll be the first person to admit that. But the matchup is actually good. The matchup is actually pretty good. The Browns have allowed the fourth most yards and the fourth most fantasy points to outside receivers this year. Also, of note, very interesting note, they've been getting got on deep passes, specifically on deep passes. They have allowed the fourth most receptions and the fifth most yards on passes of 20 plus air yards downfield. Obviously, when we start lining these things up, some of this stuff actually looks pretty good for Marquez Valdez Scantling. And man, I don't know. I swear to God. Last week might have been the best I've ever seen MVS play. I don't know, maybe ever, but certainly over the last few years, easily, easily the best he's looked in years. Maybe I'm overreacting. I'm pro I probably am overreacting. <laughs> but, I mean, again, there's wide open target share in New Orleans, and it's a good matchup. If you need a big number, Again, if you need a big number, I don't hate MVS against Cleveland. All right, Parker Washington against Detroit. I don't feel that confident in it, but this one is a straight matchup play. The Lions have seemingly funneled targets inside all year long, and they have allowed the most receptions, the most yards, and the most fantasy points to receivers lined up inside. We just saw... John Mechie come out of nowhere to score 18 fantasy points against the Detroit Lions last week. And in fact, five of the last six primary slot receivers have scored double-digit PPR points against Detroit. If you This one might not be more, so much of a ceiling play because we've got Mac Jones in there, but if you need 9 to 12 points, Parker Washington might not be a bad play. 
Again, his floor is certainly lower. His floor is something like four or five. So that part of it is a little scary. I, I'm not, I'm not going ten toes all in on Parker Washington this week uh, because shoot, it might end up just being 15 targets to freaking Evan Ingram for whatever reason. <laughs> But again, um, I think he's got a good matchup on the board here. All right, final deep sleeper here for you, and we'll get the hell out. Devon Vilay against Atlanta. Again, the matchup data just driving me towards these slot receivers here for Denver. The matchup is solid, man. The Falcons have given up the sixth most fantasy points per game to the slot, including the second most receptions. The only question for me becomes... Will Vele hold on to the snap share he saw last week? It's been very up and down. But I will leave you with this very interesting statistical note in regards to Devon Vele. He played a total of 35 offensive, offensive snaps last week. And that's significant because in the three games where he has played at least 30 snaps, Vele has been productive in those three games. He averaged six targets, 5.3 receptions, and 52 yards per game. Again, we're all just on catches and yards, we're getting you to double digits. That's not bad. He did score a touchdown in one of those three games as well. So he has scored 11 plus PPR points in all three of those games while averaging 12.5 PPR points across that board. So does he hold on to this snap share? I think he might. If he can play 30 or more snaps, he's been productive. Um, let's see if he could do that in a good matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. All right, so there you go. That's the show. Um, I hope everyone's got a great week 11 on deck, man. Uh, don't be like me. In my league of record, I'm out of the playoffs, and it sucks, and life sucks, and I'm depressed. Okay? Don't be like, don't be like me. <laughs> don't be like me. I hope your team stays healthy. Health has been a big issue for my team, uh, as, as it has been for a lot of different teams. But health has been a big issue, but it doesn't matter. We're here, and I'm still pumping out this content. And while you're here, man, would you guys like and subscribe to the podcast? Would you leave me a review as well? That would help me considerably. By the way, the full sleeper list, the full sleeper list, quarterback, wide receiver, running back, and tight ends can be found, as always, on the website, Sleeper King Football. Com. If you have a specific question that you want to throw my way, find me on social media. I'm really trying to grow my Threads account right now. At James D. Co. Whatever social media platform you're on. I shouldn't say that. It's Instagram. It's uh, YouTube. It's TikTok. And of course, it's on Threads as well. Anyways, I'm slowly but surely divesting myself from X, but it's all good. So let's try to build that Threads account right now. If you guys could help me, man, that would be very much appreciated. Anyways, I got to go. We'll see you guys next week and good luck to everyone out there.